After the first few months of the season, a lot of people were ready to count out the Boston Celtics. They started out the season with a disappointing 19 and 21 record, and it prompted a lot of concern over the fit between the two Jays, the front office's ability to put a decent supporting cast around them, and it fueled an endless supply of trade rumors for the first half of the season. Now, the Celtics have managed to rack up a promising amount of wins over the last 20 games, prompting many NBA fans to ask the question, have the Celtics figured it out? So in this video, we're gonna look at what exactly they're doing differently. We're gonna see how their moves before the trade deadline set them up for success going forward and why they're a bigger threat in the East than people realize. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Let's get right into it. So as it currently stands, the Boston Celtics hold the longest active win streak in the league after their win against the Atlanta Hawks on Monday. They've now won eight straight games and are nine and one in their last 10. This team was constantly in the headlines at the beginning of the season, with people claiming one of either Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum was going to need to be traded, the roster was constructed poorly, there were locker room problems, and all sorts of other reports. You have to consider the fact that this was largely a new team heading into this season. They had a new front office, they had a new coach, and some new and familiar faces returning to the lineup that had to be gotten up to speed. You can't expect a team that underwent so many changes to hop onto the court and immediately integrate with one another right out of the gate. Sometimes we simplify these things and then wonder why they don't go well, when the truth is there are so many different factors and variables at play that forming a simplistic view of the situation is kind of naive. So when the Celtics started off rough, the criticisms and reports followed. But as they say, winning cures all and the Boston Celtics have been doing a lot of winning recently. Since the start of the new year, they've got a record of 16 and 6. Over the last 15 games of the season, they've been the best defensive team in the entire NBA, with a defensive rating of 99 points allowed per 100 possessions, which is a ridiculous 11.6 points better than the league average defensive rating. They also clock a whopping 14.6 net rating over this same stretch of games. They've been playing as a team on both ends of the floor, and it's really starting to show up in the win column and in the stat sheet. Jason Tatum has been on fire after a suboptimal start to the year. Many people, including myself, were expecting this to be the year that Tatum went from being just an all-star slash fringe all-NBA player to taking the leap into MVP discussions and becoming a top 10 player in the NBA. So when that didn't happen at the beginning of the year, alarm bells understandably started to go off in the minds of Celtics fans. He was still getting the numbers that we've come to expect, but the shooting was uncharacteristically bad. Tatum was shooting with a true shot percentage of 51.1% through the first 20 games of the season. Tatum has never been some hyper-efficient scorer, and nobody is going to make the argument that he is or ever was. But this level of poor shooting over a stretch of games like that was concerning to say the least. Now, fast forward to now, this shooting is looking miles better. A 57.9 true shot percentage with 26.2 points per game, and while the three-point shooting this year isn't quite what it was last year, he's been able to find other ways to score without relying on his three-point shot. My hope is that this shooting trend continues upwards over the rest of the regular season so he can roll into the playoffs with a hot hand. It seems he and Jalen have been much more on the same page lately. This play is a great example of that chemistry. They're in a transition opportunity and Brown is going up the middle with Tatum bringing the ball up the floor. You can see Brown is motioning for the pass and making eye contact with Jason Tatum. Tatum is going to make a really slick pass and split basically three defenders, allowing Brown to get to the rim for an easy layup. Also, Jalen Brown has been doing some dirty work on offense, and I love it. You can see on this play that Grimes is looking to stay with Tatum and double him at the top of the key. But Brown sets what can only loosely be described as a screen, and he completely shuts down the double team. When Grimes overcorrects trying to cover Brown and Tatum expecting a Tatum drive, Tatum finds Brown and he knocks down the wide open three. For all the reports about these guys not being able to coexist with one another, they're doing a pretty good job of coexisting with one another. I won't argue that there are some noticeably tense moments from earlier in the season, but they seem to be much more on the same page as of late. 
With Jalen Brown's vastly improved shot creation ability, the only thing missing was somebody to connect the two. And that leads me to my next point. The Celtics had a big trade deadline, seeing a large chunk of their roster being moved in favor of replacing quantity with quality. They shored up their rotation a bit to go out and get Derek White, and they also traded for Daniel Tice. While I think Daniel Tice can be impactful for the Celtics, I want to focus more on Derek White and what he brings to the table for them because it's a lot. Derek White is a player that, unless you're watching a ton of basketball and you're a pretty diehard fan of the NBA, you probably aren't too familiar with Derek White and you might not know a ton about him. White is a Spurs player to a T. You can tell that he played for Greg Popovich. What I mean by this is that he's a constant movement, split second decision maker. He brings a ton of movement to this offense and his ability to keep the offense moving is gonna rejuvenate a team that can occasionally gets stagnant and predictable. He's listed as a shooting guard, but White possesses no shortage of playmaking ability. Averaging five and a half assists per game this year, he's got the ability to operate in the pick and roll, he can pass and transition, he can drive and kick. He's a Swiss army knife of a guard. And that's while being a very efficient playmaker, averaging less than two turnovers per game this year. That's why I'm not really concerned with them trading away Josh Richardson and the picks they did to acquire Derek White. He provides the same things that Schroeder and Richardson provided, all wrapped up into one player. He's such a smart ball handler and he rarely looks flustered, even when he's in situations where he's forced to improvise. Like on this play, he takes the ball into the paint on a cut, but he loses his handle slightly and he's forced to pick it up. He recovers the ball and since Pirtle filled the paint correctly, he's still able to dump the pass off to him for an easy layup. The Celtics got a guy who can help run your half court offense and also play on the fly in such a way that doesn't sacrifice quality for speed. He can mess those two components together and keep things flowing. And this doesn't even cover his defense. Derek White is legitimately one of the best defensive guards in the entire NBA. He's just pesky and he makes life so hard for ball handlers. He's getting a steal and a half per game, but while he's not exactly a pickpocket kind of guy, he's very effective as a perimeter defender. He ranks fifth in Basketball Index's off-ball chaser defensive metric among guards and second in their on-ball perimeter defense metric, making him one of the best perimeter defenders in the entire NBA right now. He's also drawn the third most charges in the league this year with 19 charges. He's a hustler and with how good he already is at everything else, that hustle and defensive ability is just an added bonus. For a team that's already been so great on defense over the last 15 games, he's gonna be vital to their continued success on the defensive and offensive end of the floor. But what does all of this mean for a Celtics team that's perennially good enough to make the playoffs, but they haven't been able to make it out of the Eastern Conference yet? To me, they really feel like a true dark horse threat to make it out of the East. We know they have the top end talent in the two J's and now they have a more well-rounded supporting cast with a diverse skill set. The defensive backcourt of Derek White and Marcus Smart is going to be a nightmare and he's going to be able to operate as a connector between the two J's. He's literally the perfect fit because he augments their skills while not stepping on their toes and taking away from them. This team, if things keep trending the way they are, are going to be a really tough out for any team that they run into in the playoffs. After the questions of if they were going to be a play-in team, they're now only four and a half games back from the one seed, and with how contested this Eastern Conference has been, that one seed is entirely up for grabs. So do you think the Boston Celtics are threats to come out of the East? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and leave a like on the video because that's the number one way to help me out with the algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.